Hey guys, King Gath here with another patch for Sim Settlements 2. This is patch 1.1.0, which I'm calling the rebalancing. And as you'll notice, I didn't say 1.0 point something for the first time since SS2 launched. I think that's the longest that we've gone between uh, changing a, uh, a more than just the minor patch number. And that is because it's a big deal. This is a huge patch. Um, probably would have been worthy of a 2.0 change, but I only like to do those as the patch right before we launch an expansion. Uh, I think I copied that from World of Warcraft. That was where I saw them doing that all the time, and I liked it. But anyway... The point being is that because the number is changing, the second number is changing, the point of that, uh, when I do that, is to indicate to you guys that you should consider whether you want to finish your current character's save on the previous version before you upgrade to this. It's not to say it'll break your save by changing this version. I always make sure that these upgrade in place uh, correctly, but because the changes are so dramatic, you probably would have wanted to build your settlements differently had you started with this patch. So I'm highly advising uh, new playthroughs with this patch, though you can absolutely go through and do them. I've given you the tools so that you can update your saves to work with this patch. It's not a problem. Um, but if you're if you're jonesing for a new playthrough, this would be a great time to do it because these changes are so significant. In fact, so significant, there are five pages of patch notes, and I'm going to try and sum those up for you guys and talk about the main major things that we changed with this patch and then of course the full detailed patch notes are up on the wiki so those of you guys who want to read all the little details and the numbers behind it can do so in fact we've even released all of the spreadsheets with all the numbers and math behind them rigged up so that uh, you can see how this machine works under the hood it's even got a, a simulator sheet where you can kind of play some settlements on a spreadsheet if you're a real data nerd like me you will get a kick out of that and uh, that is available for you guys as well but before we get into all this where we start talking more about all these patch notes we gotta thank some patrons you guys keep flocking to our patreon and it is awesome it's really really cool to see this many people supporting this project because this project is a monster uh, as I uh, learned while diving under the hood to tinker with the numbers this month. Uh, so huge shout out and thanks to Dawson, Andar, Mark Breitenbach, Mostin30, Eric Anderson, Gerald Bosch, Teacher Guy, Terrence L. Ternofsky. Thank you all and thank you to everybody else. If I didn't get to you today, don't worry, I will get to you in another video. I'd try and do this at the top of every video and unless I catch myself rambling on and on about a patch like today. I almost forgot you guys on Patreon and uh, my apologies for that because you guys are kind of the lifeblood. You guys help uh, make sure that we don't uh, have to offend our significant others or uh, kill off our own gaming budgets to work on this project. All right, let's get into these patch notes. It's huge. So uh, and rather than go over line by line on them, I'm just going to say that the top half is kind of like the bug fixes and changes, or rather not even the top half, like the first page, if you were to lay these out in like a Microsoft document. The first page is kind of the stuff for, for people who don't care about all the numbers. And then after that, I broke it up. I put a section called balance changes. And then the preceding like four pages worth of data are all about the balance changes. And I'm going to talk about the major points. There's a lot of little detail, little things that numbers have changed, some, some uh, building plans have changed their classes and things like that. So there's a lot to read, but uh, I'm going to talk about the major points of the rebalance because that was the primary focus of this. We did take out some pretty pretty big bugs like the fact the salvage beacons were broken. We fixed that. We um, took care of some of the maintenance cost issues. So some pretty significant bugs were taking out. And the reason we did all of this in one patch is because it is time for me to hunker down and start working exclusively on Chapter 2. So this, other than hot fixes uh, that need to be happen after this patch, there will be no more patches until the 2.0 patch, which will happen basically the day of or the day before the uh, expansion launches. So we don't have a date for that yet. So I don't know how long uh, that you'll be without patches, but just know that this is the big major patch to try and stomp out the remaining major issues and to get you guys this rebalance, which I think will uh, definitely make a new playthrough worthy. It's, it's designed to really change the way SS2 plays from a numbers perspective so that the different types of plots you build and everything will matter. Now, if you never really played with a lot with the costs turned on, you didn't play with maintenance costs or operating costs or anything like that, or you were playing in the simple complexity or the, the easy mode where you just have the one number and let me pop into workshop mode here so we can talk about things with reference on screen. So if you don't see all those numbers up on screen, if you just see, let me cycle through here and see if my hotkeys are set up today. Uh, get my mouse in focus. So if you just see this, you probably won't notice any difference at all in your gameplay balance because the numbers at that level didn't really were not very significant anyway. Um, but where things will start to be significantly different are if you're playing at this level or this level. I want to talk about those two. So um, assuming you are playing at this mid-level, if I can get my 
there we go. These hotkeys on the MCM are very, very clunky. Uh, but if you're if you're playing like this, so one of the things that we had originally conceived with the mod that kind of got lost, and it was mostly just due to the way we kind of balanced the mod initially, was the idea that each of those four resource types that are underneath scrap, so the little wheelbarrow, that represents building materials. Then below that, the little jug with the leaf on it, that's organic materials, followed by the gears, which is machine parts, and then the nuclear stuff is the rare materials. And the idea was is that the first one, the building materials, was just your very cheap stuff, the things that you would use to build structures, so wood and steel, and then we put a few other ones in there like fiberglass and aluminum. And then next you had organic materials, which would be the, the first kind of extra type of resource. So it was to be the consumables, the things that uh, your sellers would use a lot of. Then the next tier up from that, the next consumable was machine parts, which is a little more advanced. And then finally the rare materials, which were the most advanced. And the idea was kind of to simulate something like you might see in a game uh, like uh, StarCraft, where they've got uh, the minerals versus Vespian gas, or if you go into the some of the older games like Age of Empires, then they would have like five or six different minerals. You had the, like the ore, or you had like gold and uh, iron and everything like that. And it was kind of to simulate that idea. And the real, the real thing we wanted to get instilled here is that the higher up that scale you go, the more expensive those are, and that also meant that the later in the game you should be messing with stuff that cost those things. But unfortunately, when we launched, pretty much everything cost a little bit of every type. And it, so a lot of that was lost in translation. So we fixed that, uh, went through and changed it so that depending on the stage of the game that you're expected to start playing with that building plan, it will determine which class of those resources are used. So in the early game, things were only gonna cost building materials. Then as you go a little bit later in the game, when you start leveling up your plots, you'll see they also start costing some organic materials and so on, it goes on up the chain. So that can help you gauge where we anticipate you'll be building things in your settlement. So if you're finding that uh, you're not sure what you should be building next, you can use that as kind of a guide. Try selecting a building plan, it'll bring up the construction costs, and you can see if those are within the range of the stuff that you've been collecting. And you also notice that we paired each of those different categories up with one of the classes. And you'll see those during the unlocks while you're playing, but I can bring this up just to show you guys so we can have a reference point because uh, I know I don't have any graphics or anything on screen, but the building materials gathering is the first one you unlock, then you unlock organic materials gathering, followed by machine parts, and then rare materials. So we, we, we had some of these things in place to kind of give you that guide point, but because the cost didn't match up, it really didn't come across correctly. And then of course you had junk gathering, that's the one you start with. And uh, that one we have made completely free. So you do have to pay to upgrade it, but you get to build as many of those as you want for free because you lose total control of the junk that you're building. So it's just kind of random stuff. You never know what you're gonna get. And then those higher tier ones, the building materials, organic materials, etc., those will build just within that category. And then finally, we have the, at the top end of the pyramid is the conversion plot, which will produce gigantic amounts of a particular resource. Now this is less useful if you're in category view because you only have four different types. Um, the conversion was always meant to be a type that was super useful for people playing in this mode where you have to deal with all 30, 30, 35 resources, 31 resources, I don't remember how, the exact number, a whole bunch of different resources. You basically have to deal with all the different junk components that exist in the vanilla game. So that was the next point that we focused our efforts on was making sure that the gameplay for you guys is smooth as well. So obviously the, the general idea follows still. It's a matter of the building materials is for the early game. And then as you go later, you'll move down the tree there. And so we've done the same thing with the cost. The costs will uh, scale up that tree as you go higher in level in the buildings and higher up in the types of buildings that we expect you to build at the different stages in the game. And the one of the things that we tried to do with this is bring the numbers in the in the amount that are being produced and being used closer to what you will find in the vanilla game. So we did an analysis of all the different items that are in the base game and, and their appearance rate and tried to get ours a little closer aligned to that so that the costs will make a little more sense. And that way, if you're gonna be doing a mix of donation and building things yourself, that you will find that the resources that you need are fairly well matching up with where your character is. Now, 
the optimal way to get resources is definitely industrial plots. You are by no means meant to donate all this stuff. Donation is kind of the, the only time you should ever have to donate anything is if you're just a tad short or if it's super early game. And even then donating probably shouldn't be necessary because you can mostly get the easy stuff like the building materials by just running around the settlement and scrapping junk. There's usually enough stuff, even in the vanilla game without the extra scrap mods that add a bunch of additional stuff that you that you get from scrapping things. There should be plenty in a base settlement to cover the early game in some settlements too to get up a decent chain of industrial going. So those are the major changes regarding the resources. We kind of we treat it out so that the uh, the resources, depending on how high up they are on the HUD over there, determines what stage of the game you should be collecting those. And you'll kind of tell as you start activating, looking at construction costs. So if we go over here and we click our uh, start construction option, which I probably actually can't because I don't have any people assigned, but we'll just go ahead and click a building plan, uh, and I'll show you the. Uh, Thing here let's bring up we'll do yeah machine parts salvage yard so we'll go ahead and accept this and in just a second it'll pop up the cost and you'll see that it'll have costs across the board and that's because that is a later game so you calculate construction costs here you go and so you can see this one is going to require some uh concrete steel and wood which are all building materials and then some acid and oil which are organic materials and then when you level it up it'll start requiring some machine parts etc and so each of the buildings will kind of follow that pattern of the higher level they are and the higher the higher their class in the tree the uh the more different types that you'll see that they'll require and you can see that on any of these plot types so if we go ahead and go over to our residential plot here and we choose a random building plan you'll see that it's going to cost exclusively uh it's going to just cost some building materials, which will be the nice cheap stuff. And again, for those of you guys not playing in the full complexity, this is incredibly easy. Um, and then for those of you guys playing at the, uh, I'm sorry, playing in the mid complexity where you've just got the four categories, getting building materials is easy, it's all interchangeable. But even this is totally reasonable for those of you guys playing at the full complexity detail, you don't have to go gather a bunch of high level materials. Now this is pretty cheap stuff here. The hardest one to get obviously being asbestos, uh, but uh, you can acquire that pretty easily by building a building materials plot and then letting that generate a little bit of resources and you'll quickly find that asbestos. Whereas glass and wood, you'll find just laying around the settlement. And that was how it's designed. It's definitely you're de it's definitely supposed to be a little bit harder for people playing on full complexity. I think that's why you guys like it. You enjoy the challenge. Otherwise, you would just go down to the, the category and then ha not have to worry about any of these numbers. They're just kind of, they're just kind of a, a little bit of a, a time gate as opposed to an actual uh, challenge to find this stuff. So the, the other reason that I have some of these plots here is to talk about a couple of uh, big changes in the structure of things. Um, one is that cap costs have changed. So there's a, a constant thing I've noticed with everybody is that you're all cap rich in your settlements. You're, uh, if you look at the number of caps people have up in the resource tab at the top there, everybody's got just boatloads because there weren't enough costs for them. Uh, and the costs were kind of spread all over the place. And in the original design documentation, we wanted them to be on the marshal and municipal plots because those kind of represent your city services. They don't generate a lot of value in themselves. They're mostly just things that are benefiting the community as a whole. And so we wanted those to be kind of spending the tax money as it were. <clears throat> Pardon me, I'm talking so much, I'm losing my voice. So now the Marshall and Municipal plots are the primary consumer of that tax money, and your primary generator of those in the early game is your residential. But the residential has been trunking down a little bit in the amount of taxes they produce because the ideal situation, the way it was designed in concept originally, was that commercial, the, the primary benefit to building those was that they produce a ton of caps to fund your municipal and marshal. So now everything in the mod has a nice place and it's going to be such that you should naturally be building things not only that follow the material costs, but also that make sense to a society. Obviously the most important stuff early is that the characters have food and enough stuff to build up more things with. And then eventually you get into the more, the more need for caps in the later parts of the game. And then so you'll start building up commercial, which presumably will follow along when your settlers have all their other needs met and they can start worrying about things like shops, which are kind of late in the hierarchy of needs. 
So we tried to follow that across the board. If you look through some of my spreadsheets and stuff, you'll see different things like that. You'll see also we've had a, a on our wiki, we had a tech tree and that's been slightly adjusted. I don't know if we'll have gotten the graphic adjusted since uh, we made this change, but we tinkered, tinkered with things a little bit uh, just to, after we did all the numbers, we realized there were some little few mistakes or things we needed to move down the tech tree a little bit. And that tech tree was kind of our guide for how all these costs and everything lay out. Um, I think the the last two things we're talking about in uh, the rebalance are that the the maintenance costs have gone through a massive overhaul. So if you felt like a lot of the vanilla items were crazily expensive, I know some of them were very odd too. Um, things like the machine gun turret just had a crazy un, uh, unmatchable cost. And then something like the heavy machine gun turret, I think cost less in maintenance costs, which didn't make a lot of sense. Um, that was just, there were just a few points where we hadn't been consistent. It's now all mathematically consistent for the different, uh, the different types. We gave a, a general value to each of the different resources. And then we, match those up to the amount of uh, defense, water, et cetera, that were produced. And each of those has a sub value. And then we gave a little discount if they had power, et cetera. So it should be, it should make a lot more sense. And it also, we distributed the different types of resources that it costs for maintenance costs, maintenance costs so that if you find yourself, for example, flush with uh, one type over another, then you could use different objects to to cover those costs. So for example, you've got yourself a lot of copper uh, in excess, you could use more of the powered turrets where if you find yourself short on that, but you've got a high of, and I don't remember all the specific resources, if you find yourself high in another type, you could maybe use some of the, some of the non-powered versions of things instead. And for across the board for whether it's for defense or water or uh, power, the lowest tier of those the so for example like the windmill generator this basic machine gun turret and the hand pump they all use uh, relatively cheap resources so that you can still use those alongside plots but one of the problems with the maintenance costs that we were that we've been constantly battling is that technically if you run the numbers it always makes most sense to just spam those instead of using plots and so for chapter two we've got a system that will help with that to get add more benefit to the plots as opposed to having to make the maintenance costs on the turrets absolutely absurd so now they're closer in line to the main to the operating costs on the plot so they're kind of an even value uh, but we recognize that plots because they require manpower are at a disadvantage to all these vanilla items and so there's going to be some new advantages added with chapter two but for now we just wanted to get these maintenance costs cleaned up so that it doesn't feel like a massive punishment to use any single vanilla item uh then let me check my notes make sure i'm not missing anything important here um i think that about covers it i would definitely if, if you're at least read the patch notes at the top uh if you find that anything anything is uh, off from what you expected in between this patch and the last it's likely got changed due to the balance changes like i know there's a few things that like uh, i believe one building plan i think a steel mill is now renamed metal mill so if you're looking for that that's where you'd find it um, there's a couple of plots that changed classes over to the conversion type so that the conversion gameplay would play better and by the way conversion if you haven't used it yet it or if you have used it and you stopped using it because you felt it was useless we we felt you and it was very useless uh in the prior to this patch but now should be very very useful it now produces just boatloads of resources as opposed to prior to this patch where it produced very very tiny amounts for what it was consuming um, and those uh, the consumptions on the conversion and production plots should help with those of you who are having storage issues. There's been a constant conversation I've been having with a few different people about how it's very easy to get stuck in a loop to where you are producing so many of certain types of resources that you're constantly filling up your storage to the point where <clears throat> excuse me, certain costs can't be paid anymore because there's no room to produce those resources. And we actually have a solution to that. That was the other note that I failed to put on my paper, but I needed to tell, talk to you guys about. So those of you who do play with operating maintenance costs on, and one of the things that's been brought up basically since the first couple of weeks after SS2 came up and that I didn't have a great solution for, uh, but thanks to some discussions with uh, M. Sabala and uh, C C R B C B R or C B C B R Gamer uh, on the forums, I have uh, uh, we came to a, a solution for this, and that is now that when you produce resources and there's no room in storage. The produced resources for that day are kept in like a secret holding numbers that SS2 tracks. It won't show up on your HUD or anything. And the operating costs can be paid from those. So if you get to a point where, you know, you can see on your HUD that your, you know, your settlements are producing, you know, 40 circuitry per day 
and for some reason your your building plans that require those operating costs or your your uh, plots that require those operating costs just keep failing and won't pay those because of that that shouldn't happen anymore which is a pretty i think will be a pretty big deal for those you guys who play with operating costs and maintenance to have uh, what we call overproduction storage where it basically stores one day's worth of overproduction so that we still keep the spirit of the storage capacity in place but we don't end up in these weird situations where your settlements are clearly producing enough to cover their operating costs, but then fail to do so just because of the way the storage system works. So hopefully that will be a uh, big improvement. Man, this rain is really bringing me down. It brings me down in real life and it's bringing me down in the game. I tend to always put the put the force weather command in and I just failed to do so for this patch. Uh, so I think that that covers the majority of it. Again, lots of, lots of stuff to read in the patch notes. Um, I guess there's one more thing I will talk about. Um, and that is uh, the plot unlocking so if you guys play through the quest to get access to plots in your new playthroughs like you don't just use the cheat the cheat commands in the hollow tape to bypass stuff anymore and you still like going through the thing we uh got a hold of jake's voice actor and had him record a few lines for us for this patch so that we could introduce uh a, i won't say one of the plot types earlier but a variant of one of the plot types a little earlier in the quest line because we felt there's way too long a gap between when you get the in, the industrial and agricultural plots and when you get the other four types i knew we needed to introduce one of the plot types a little sooner just to to keep it interesting to keep building up your settlements without cramming everybody with the same two jobs uh, and so you'll find that uh, at the end of the well 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 quest now that there's a, a little extra reward, which I think uh, you guys will enjoy. So uh, if you're looking for an excuse to do a new playthrough, maybe you missed Jake, you wanna hear him again. Uh, can't can't imagine a better time uh, to do this prior to the 2.0 patch. It'll give you a good amount of time between now and then to get used to all these new numbers, the new, used to the new pattern that you should be building out your settlements. And we're gonna try and do some, some visual documents uh, on the wiki as well to help you guys understand some of these changes and, and more important than the changes is more kind of the 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 idea that we had when we were building this because one of the downsides with uh, the with the way we have the hud right now is we don't have full power with it we can't just give you guys all of the information we'd like to easily because none of us is a ui programmer and the base game does not like the custom hud stuff that's why things like me hitting the hotkeys and it not working is very clunky because we're trying to make this work without f4se and so that limits our ability to show a lot of information in the game. And so we want to give you guys more information outside of the game, at least in simple form, so you can quickly digest it and understand what we were going for so that uh, it makes it more apparent. But I hope that these changes in the balance will make that more intuitive so you can see things like the, the blocked costs and how we've implemented those. And again, you've got access to that spreadsheet as well. If you're a math junkie and you want to go check it out, maybe you can find some flaws in, in my numbers and I'd be happy to discuss those on the forums. Uh, but otherwise, guys, let's get into uh, merch giveaway because I could talk for hours about this balance stuff because it has just been my obsession for the past four weeks. Uh, and I'm very, very glad to get this into your guys' hands. But let's do some merch giveaway. Every patch, I like to give away some merch. So the way we do this, if you haven't participated before, is I'm going to give you a hashtag. And below, you're going to leave a comment about uh, some settlements and tell me uh, anything interesting at all. Uh, something funny that happened to you in the game, something you like about the mod, something you hate about the mod, tell me a bug report, whatever, just something so that uh, as I'm going through, reading through, looking for this hashtag, I have more to read than just that hashtag spammed over and over again. So that hashtag is going to be hashtag replay because uh, I think this patch will make uh, for a very good uh, replay. It's time for a new playthrough if you haven't done one in a while. So like I said at the top of the video, if you are happy with your current playthrough and you're having a good time, everything is going great, just hold off from downloading this patch unless you just really uh, you're really anxious to try out this new stuff. You don't care um, if it uh, makes your settlements all goofy. Like I said, we've tested it. It's not going to break your save or anything. But these numbers, uh, some of the numbers are so dramatically different that uh, your settlement layout might not make as much sense anymore. Um, but you can use the the hollow tape to uh, refresh all of the numbers in your settlement. It also will try and do it automatically when you arrive at each of your settlements. So if you are gonna upgrade on a current save, it's, I'd, I'd go visit all your settlements and uh, give them a few minutes, just wander around them for, for a little bit and give it time to run the code. And then if you're not sure if it ran or not, you can always run it yourself manually. Under tools and advanced tools, we've added this recalculate costs in production. And that will go through and uh, refresh all the different costs uh, surrounding SS2. So it'll update the amount of stuff your plots are producing. It'll update the maintenance and operating costs, etc., and you can do that on demand from there. So definitely, if you're going to upgrade an existing save, go to all your settlements and either run that tool or just hang around for a few minutes and 
let the uh, the patch code run and do that for you. All right, guys. With all that said, take care and enjoy the mods, and I will see you guys with the 2.0 patch. I'll still be making videos and stuff between now and then, but uh, you won't see any more patches between now and then other than hotfixes. All right.